Hello and welcome to the third update of the murdered munitions magnate. Our first port of call will be the Russian Embassy. I cannot deny it. My government is very interested in the new naval gun being developed by Grants. But we are a patient people. We will wait until the British government deigns to allow Grant Arms to sell us the new gun. Sir, would you mind telling us where you were on the evening of March 9th? Was that not the night of Mr. Allen's death? It was. Well, let me see. Ah, yes. I was attending a performance at the Covent Gardens Theatre. And now, gentlemen, if you will excuse me, I have some business to attend to. I'm not sure whether we can confirm this, as I don't believe we actually have dates of when this case took place. The next person we will visit will be Emile Zobar. Would you care for a cigarette? There are Burns and Hills Imperials. A wonderful smoke. Thank you, no. <coughs> you really shouldn't be smoking in your condition. It is nothing, just a little bit of a cold. <laughs> Tell me, Monsieur Zobar, where were you on the evening of March 9th? Ah, oh, yes. That was the night of Monsieur Allen's death. I was at Simpsons, beating the pants off of Alfie, the so-called chess champion. <laughs> Are you acquainted with a Mr. Richard Camp? Oh, but of course. He's employed at Grant Arms Company, and he's secretly engaged to my beautiful niece, Annette. Why must the lovebirds be so secretive? Uh, because uh, my brother, uh, Annette's father, has an inexplicable dislike for the English. And you, Monsieur Zobar, do you share your brother's feelings? Oh, mon dieu, no! I admire you English very much. Has Mr. Camp ever spoken with you about the special project on which he was working for Grant? Oh, never. Nor would I ever ask him about such a confidential matter. He has a profound sense of loyalty. That's why I admire him so much. Okay. Our Fred Simpson is in the directory, but we can't actually visit him. So, our next person will be Hector Del Guerra. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Of course, I recall March 9th. It is our wedding anniversary. That evening, we had a formal dinner party for 30 guests. What time did the festivities begin? Most of the guests arrived by half past six, but not all. Count von Schulenberg and his wife made their grand entrance at 8.30. Okay, so it seems like he actually has an alibi for the night of the murder. Well, Del Guerra, I mean, not von von Schulenberg. Our next visit will be to the Grant Arms corporate offices. Mr. Lindhardt, I understand Mr. Allen was scheduled to meet with Captain Egan at 8.30. Oh, yes. Egan's the artillery officer for the Admiralty. I saw him leave for the meeting around 8. He said good night and went out to the back door to the alley where he always leaves to catch a cab. Do you know what the meeting was about? Not that particular meeting. But Mr. Allen and Captain Egan did meet often to discuss the progress of their new special project, Project 10. I did find it curious that the meeting on the 9th was scheduled for the evening. All the others occurred during the day. I imagine a person in his position must have been extremely concerned about security. Indeed he was. He called in Lord Ragland after he noticed several strange people hanging around the Deverell Street plant. All the technical data, blueprints, that sort of thing are housed there. I see. I understand you are now secretary to the new president, Mr. Marlowe. Yes. He was Mr. Allen's hand-picked successor, which perfectly illustrates the type of man Mr. Allen was. What do you mean? Only that there was no love loss between them. And yet, recognizing Marlowe's outstanding business skills, he named him as his heir, so to speak. Oh. That seemed to have perked up Holmes?
William Linhart is in a directory, but again, we can't actually visit his residence. So the last person we will, we will visit in this update will be Lord Ragland himself. Lord Ragland, on the night of Mr. Allen's murder, he had an appointment with Captain Egan. Yes, Egan's our purchasing officer for naval artillery. We've been working on a secret project for the Navy, and Courtney was concerned about one of the engineers being a security risk. Which one? It was Richard Camp. When Courtney and I discussed it, I gave no credence to the idea. Well, tell me, Lord Ragland, what sort of fellow is Richard Camp? He's splendid, really. Not a mark on his record. But as a concession to both Courtney and Egan, I removed him from the project and placed him elsewhere. Interesting aroma. What brand is it? It's Burns and Hills Imperials. It's their newest. Uh, would you care for one? No, thank you. Um. Lord Raglan, after Mr. Allen's death, were you disappointed at not being named president? Not a bit. I'm quite happy in my work in the technical areas. Administrative matters hold no interest to me. Besides, one of Marlowe's conditions when he first came on was that he be Courtney's successor when Courtney retired. This is all such a tragedy, don't you agree? But if you'll excuse me, I have a few business matters to attend to. You know how it is. Quite. And there we go. That is it for this update. Voting is now open again. Thank you for watching. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.